Hey everybody, it's Fox with Fox Hill Games, and this is a Fox first sent for Salt and Sanctuary on the PC. Now, yes, it's already been out for a while on PlayStation 4, and I do own a PlayStation 4, so why didn't I buy it on the PlayStation 4? Well, I'm a PC gamer at heart, plus I thought there might be some additional benefits to getting on PC. The possibility of mods, maybe some additional features, maybe it would play better. I don't have the PS4 version at the moment, but I can say that I don't regret waiting I like to get my games on PC whenever possible. It's also easier to record gameplay and commentate over it as if I'm doing a Fox First set. Welcome, everybody. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to the channel, like the video, all that other good stuff. And let's talk about some of the graphics options while you look at me construct a character. Um, one thing I wanted to mention real quick about character uh, creation is that the hairstyles all appear to be gender neutral. So you can pick any hairstyle for either gender. I actually don't like this because... It sort of makes it odd in that, you know, you can pick these hairstyles that would never traditionally be on, say, a male or never traditionally be on, say, a female. Though most of them work okay, but uh, I would have preferred a separation there to more clearly and distinctly separate the two genders so they look more different than they do. Basically, the only thing different is the fact that their face is slightly different. The chef, I swear they added chef in a update later. I don't remember chef being a starting class. Hunter, that's for Bloodborne fans, apparently. Paladin, I love the Paladin character. So that's the first one I went with when I just tested the game out for a little bit. But I think we're going to go ahead and uh, roll with a knight in this one because I just love knights. I love playing as knights, and that's sort of my thing. Sword and board, as they say. Today's drink of choice is coffee. Hot and black, the way I like it. Now, in the options menu, there isn't a whole lot. Resolution, uh, full screen, windowed, or borderless full screen. Borderless full screen is essentially supposed to be the game in windowed mode, but it takes up the entirety of the monitor and looks like full screen. You can move around your view with the uh, right analog stick. Uh, instead of you know moving to 3D camera, you can push your view up, down, left, and right. Uh, you have a variety of moves, very, very similar in many ways. And I, I, I hate to say this because it's, it's getting so cliche and old nowadays, but it's kind of like Dark Souls. I know I, I know I said it. I know I said it. I'm sorry. But really, I mean, you've got your, your uh, strong attack that's a little bit slower, your light attack that's a little bit faster. <clears throat> you got a jumping attack, which you can jump up and attack downward, which wasn't in Dark Souls for obvious reasons. You've got um, a roll that you can perform to dodge, although it doesn't appear that you have invincibility frames as far as I can tell, although I've only spent about an hour and a half with the game. You set up sanctuaries instead of bonfires where you can level up. The leveling process happens automatically and then you assign skill points. So uh, your stats go up as you assign skills. So for example, if you want to wield, say, class one swords, you pick that skill and it may also increase your dexterity by one point. Or there may be a skill that simply increases strength by one. So there are skills in there that unlock certain abilities like using uh, higher level shields and all that jazz. We're going to move into some of the combat here so you can see what it's like. It's obviously 2D. You move right and left with verticality, thank goodness. You can jump which is something that uh, you wouldn't be used to from the Souls games. But again, this is a 2D platforming RPG in some ways. Action RPG. Just like in Dark Souls, it's a you know third-person action RPG. So action RPGs tend to be the big thing nowadays. Like everyone's sort of moved away from turn-based for the most part and gone with the action. You can block with a shield if you have one. And you can also two-hand your weapon which I'm not entirely sure all the benefits that go with that, but that's okay. The borderless window mode I want to talk about for just a second, it doesn't seem to work properly. At least when I enabled it, and I haven't tested it on the most recent patch because it's been patched once since I've recorded this, but uh, it does seem like, uh, I think it's been patched once, it does seem like it just creates a window and you can actually see at the bottom of your monitor, your wallpaper in the background. Like there's a little strip on the bottom that doesn't actually take up the full screen. So in order to get an actual borderless windowed mode, what I did is I just set it to, I think, borderless windowed, and then I used a program called Borderless Gaming to force it to be borderless windowed mode. You'll notice that I unlocked a shortcut by kicking down a ladder. Again, should be familiar to Souls fans. You have a health bar that does not auto-regenerate. It's stamina bar that does. And I didn't use any magic, so can't comment on magic, but you can cycle through weapons, even loadouts, like I said, you can go one-handed with your shield or two-hand your weapon, and you can cycle through items that you can use, including some little uh, flasks that heal you, and that would make sense. Most of these games have some way to heal yourself. 
uh, one of the skills involved increasing your number of healing flasks or potions by one. So apparently, I believe your healing is limited based on your skills and how you invest in it. I thought the camera look was pretty cool because it reduces the likelihood of having to take one of those uh, leaps of faith where you just have to jump down and hope that you land on a platform or that there's not some something down there that's going to instantly kill you. But the, the borderless window not working properly was a bit of a bummer. Hopefully that gets fixed. You can also parry in the game and perform criticals like if you knock out their uh, guard. Um, I wasn't able to actually accomplish a parry. I didn't try it very often, but uh, that was definitely... Um, Interesting that they included parries and a 2D side-scrolling action RPG. Some people have complained that they felt like a lot of these leveling mechanics here, the skill, skill system and all that jazz, uh, more took away from the experience because they, they wanted it to be more about skill than stats. But I'm actually okay with combining those two. Let's get to the first real boss of the game. The, the first boss encounter... Uh, you reach in the game is designed to kill you. Basically, it'll one-shot you and you barely do any damage whatsoever. I'm really bad at this, so feel free to make fun of my terrible gameplay because this is the first actual challenge in the game. And I was getting, like, jump, roll, and block confused. I was, I was trying to figure out what button's what. You know, in the heat of combat, sometimes I, I got confused into thinking, oh, well, that's the roll button. Nope, that's block. Oh, oh, no, no, I meant to roll when I blocked. And... You'll also notice me rolling as if I have invincibility frames, and that doesn't work. <laughs> Don't roll as if you have invincibility frames. You actually, as far as I can tell, you have to roll out of the way of the attack completely. If the attack passes over your character, even while rolling, you'll get hit, which makes sense. That's normally how it would work in real life. There are message bottles that you find on the ground as you play through the game, and that, those work much like messages and the Soul series. They can tell you certain things like... Uh, about, about leveling up or hints and all that good stuff. Once you claim a sanctuary, it essentially does become a straight up bonfire in many ways. You can do a variety of things there. Uh, once you do um, pray at the sanctuary or rest at it, you get your health back. And I would assume it restores your flasks and all that good stuff, as well as magic if you picked a magic using character. Salt is how you level in this game. You'll notice there's a separation between gold, your money, and salt, your experience points, which... I'm okay with that. I mean, the Soul series kind of, it didn't pioneer combining experience and and uh, money together, currency, but it did make it uh, a pretty popular thing and really pushed it into the limelight. The music in the game is actually really, really good. I like the fact that there's some atmospheric music that plays at various points. You know, so I'm just getting my butt kicked. I'm, I'm confusing the buttons constantly. Um, Right there, he seemed to almost face through me, but I think the reason he didn't hit me there was probably because I was standing too close to him. So I imagine this game will be like many others in that. Some enemies you want to stay back from, and some you want to be right up on top of to get the most benefit. The boss, I must admit, was a huge difficulty spike. Nothing other than the first boss you encountered the game, which is designed to kill you instantly, but... Nothing up until that point was any challenge whatsoever. I think you can kill that first boss, but it's very, very, very difficult, which is sort of a, a soul-style thing, kind of like the demon that you first encounter in Demon Souls. You're intended to die, but if you play really, really well, you can kill that demon. Right here, I just wanted to take you through the inventory and show you that you can equip different uh, weapons, pieces of armor, rings, shields. There are charms in the game, although I never acquired one in the short time I played it for this Fox First Scent. This is the knight character. I also played through this entire section that you just saw as the paladin. And then I'm probably going to restart and do it as a playthrough, commentated playthrough. I believe using the paladin, maybe the knight. We'll see what I decide on. I'll just go with whatever, whatever feels right in the moment. My experience with Salt in Sanctuary so far well, I gotta say that uh, I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. Uh, I didn't get very far, so I can't tell you about level progression and skill progression and how all that balances out in the end and level design as you go further in, but there were level levers to open gates, uh, keys to open locked doors, ladders to kick down, shortcuts to be made, secrets to be found. So I am definitely looking forward to play more of Salt and Sanctuary. I'll hopefully do at least one playthrough on my playthrough channel, and then I'll definitely do a review of the game as well. What do you guys think of Salt and Sanctuary? I'm Fox with Foxy Games. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe. Check the video description for all those other links, and I will see you guys next time.